Our first scripture lesson is from Psalm 95, verses 1 through 7. O come, let us sing to the Lord. Let us make a joyful noise to the rock of our salvation. Let us come into his presence with thanksgiving. Let us make a joyful noise to him with songs of praise. For the Lord is a great God and a great king above all gods. In his hand are the depths of the earth. The height of the mountains are his also. The sea is his, for he made it, and the dry land which his hands have formed. O come, let us worship and bow down. Let us kneel before the Lord our Maker, for he is our God, and we are the people of his pasture, and the sheep of his hand. O oh, that today you would listen to his voice. And our second scripture lesson is from Ephesians chapter 1, verses 15 through 23. I have heard of your faith in the Lord Jesus and your love toward all the saints. And for this reason, I do not cease to give thanks for you as I remember you in my prayers. That the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give you a spirit of wisdom and revelation as you come to know him so that with the eyes of your heart enlightened, you may perceive what is the hope to which he has called you, what are the riches of his glorious inheritance among the saints, and what is the immeasurable greatness of his power for us who believe, according to the working of his great power. God put this power to work in Christ when he raised him from the dead and seated him at his right hand in the heavenly places, far above all rule and authority and power and dominion and above every name that is named, not only in this age, but also in the age to come. And he has put all things under his feet and has made him the head over all things for the church, which is his body, the fullness of him who fills all in all. This is the word of the Lord. It is such a joy each week to know that there are many who join with us online in worshiping and Andrea and her mom Bernine are two of those who worship with us every Sunday online and so I'm grateful that Andrea was able to join in worshiping here with us today and leading us in our scripture. Let us pray together. Gracious God, open our hearts, our minds, our ears this day to your words. May they fill us anew, may they call us once again into your presence, call us as your disciples, so that we might go forth from this place and proclaim your holy name. For we pray this through Christ our Lord. Amen. One of my favorite all-time movie scenes comes from the movie Talladega Nights. I don't know if any of you have ever watched that movie, but in that movie, the main character, who is a NASCAR racer, his name is Ricky Bobby, and he sits along with his family at the dinner table. And the dinner table is laden with boxes of Domino's Pizza, KFC, and Taco Bell. And before they eat, Ricky Bobby offers grace. He begins his prayer this way, Dear Lord Baby Jesus, he then proceeds to thank baby Jesus for the various blessings. He prays and continues to repeat the phrase, Dear Lord, baby Jesus, when his wife, Carly, interrupts him and says, You know, sweetie, Jesus did grow up. You don't always have to call him baby. Ricky Bobby replies, I like the Christmas Jesus best, and I'm saying grace. When you say grace, you can say it to grown-up Jesus or teenage Jesus or bearded Jesus or whoever you want. Ricky Bobby continues his prayer, Dear tiny Jesus in your golden fleece diapers with your tiny balled up fists. His father angrily interrupts, He was a man. He had a beard. Ricky Bobby snaps back, Listen, I'm saying grace and I like the Christmas version best. At that point, Ricky Bobby's best friend, Cal, says, I like to picture Jesus in a tuxedo t-shirt. It says, I want to be formal, but I'm here to party too. <laughs> One of Ricky Bobby's sons says, I like to picture Jesus as a ninja fighting off the evil samurai. 
At which point Cal then says, I like to think of Jesus with giant eagle's wings and singing lead vocals for Leonard Skinner with an angel band. Ricky Bobby returns to his prayer saying, Dear eight pound six ounce newborn infant Jesus who doesn't even know a word yet, little infant so cuddly, but still omnipotent. You don't really expect a crude comedy about NASCAR racing starring Will Farrell to raise issues about the identity of Jesus Christ, <laughs> but that's what, exactly what happens count on Hollywood to deal with such important religious issues in such an irreverent yet hilarious way. That, that movie raises a major theological question. Among the many competing options, which Jesus, which version of Jesus is accurate? Today, as I'm sure you're all aware, is Christ the King Sunday. You had it marked in your calendars, I'm sure. It is, it is the last Sunday in the liturgical year. We end the liturgical year today on Christ the, Su Christ the King Sunday before we begin a new liturgical year next week with the first Sunday in Advent. It is on this Sunday that the church is meant to focus on the kingship of Christ. But what does that mean? In Ephesians, we read this morning that Paul asks the Spirit to give to the faithful people in, Ephe in Ephesus the knowledge of great God's great power. He wants them to be pointed towards the risen Christ seated at God's right hand in the heavenly realm. He goes on to note that Christ is the head of the church and in him all things are fulfilled. It's the ultimate statement of faith in the kingship of Christ. And it's one that it's important for us to note today. But there are many. There are many versions of Jesus. I recently reread the 2020 best selling book called Jesus and John Wayne How White Evangelicals Corrupted a Faith and Fractured a Nation. And in that book, author Kristen Demez claims that many white evangelicals are drawn to an aggressive, militant masculinity. John Wayne Jesus is a powerful, patriarchal, authoritarian, alpha male savior. They turn to the stories of Jesus cleansing the temple, along with the vengeful image of Jesus in the book of Revelation. According to Demes, that's the preferred version of Jesus that many evangelicals hold to. So it seems that if you want a benign, non-threatening, Ricky Bobby Christmas baby Jesus, no problem. If you want a militant, masculine John Wayne Jesus, no problem. If you want a Jesus, gentle shepherd Jesus, no problem. If you want the Jesus who separates the sheep from the goats, no problem. You see, we can find examples of Jesus as the leader as well as Jesus as the servant. We can always find a biblical text, a faith perspective, or even a church to confirm whatever politics or worldview we already believe in, whether that is left, right, or center. But somehow, somehow it seems that here at the end of the Christian year on Christ, this. Christ the King Sunday, perhaps God is asking us to take all these pictures of Jesus and blend them into one. Take the innocent, helpless Jesus along with the table-turning, revolutionary Jesus. Take the faithful Jewish Jesus at the same time as recognizing the expansive reach of Jesus' teaching. Recognize the grace and forgiveness of Jesus while also holding on to the Jesus who held his followers accountable. It seems that it can be all too easy for all of us to make Jesus conform to our own worldviews, our own values, our own politics. We take our preferred version of Jesus and use that to reinforce what we already believe. Just like Ricky Bobby, we all have our favorite Jesus. 
But I wonder this, I wondered this week that if Jesus doesn't challenge my worldview, if Jesus doesn't challenge my values, if Jesus doesn't challenge me on my, in my daily living, if he doesn't make me uncomfortable on a regular basis, then maybe I'm not taking him seriously enough at all. I'm reminded of the story of Lucy in The Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe. Lucy comes and asks, is Aslan safe? Aslan, of course, is the lion in the story who is meant to represent Christ. And she goes to Mrs. Beaver and says, is Aslan safe? Mrs. Beaver replies, if there is anyone who can appear before Aslan without their knees knocking, they are either braver than me or else just silly. Then he isn't safe, asked Lucy. Safe? Who said anything about safe? Of course he isn't safe, but he's good. He's the king, I tell you. All of us, it seems to me, are guilty of trying to make Jesus safe, of keeping a safe distance between our daily lives and what Christ wants from us, of making our faith fit nicely with popular culture or our politics or our views or the world around us. We too often tame Jesus to fit our lives rather than allowing Christ to upend them. However you might describe the life of Jesus, it was certainly not safe. From his birth onwards, he found himself standing in opposition to the religious authorities, to those in power, to the established and popular view of the day. His death on the cross was the final act of obedience to God, but defiance of the religious traditions of the day a dead Jewish Messiah made no sense. And yet God prevailed. Death itself was defied. New rules for a new ruler. And so in order to truly understand Christ in our lives, we, be, we need to begin not with his birth, but with his resurrection and his ascension. We need to recognize a new way of being in relationship with God the one that breaks all the rules, the one that cannot be contained, that cannot be explained or readily understood. And therefore today I wonder if all of us, if all of us need to go back to the Gospels and read the old stories of Jesus again with clear, open and honest eyes. And even when Jesus challenges my comfort zones, my beliefs, my practices, or maybe especially when he challenges them. I need to ask again for his rule to be the main one in my heart, my mind, my soul. I need to open myself to allow him to break in, to break me of my firmly held convictions, to allow him to rule in my life. So this, on this last Sunday of our liturgical year, before we move into Advent and move into the worship of that sweet baby Jesus, I ask all of you to think about who Christ is in your life. Which Jesus do you find yourself more attracted to you? Which Jesus might you need to open your heart and mind to? Which voice might you need to hear again in your life? Because God calls all of us God calls all of us to be in relationship with him through Christ, through Christ, the ruler of our world, through Christ, the one who is risen and sits with God in the heavenly realm. We are all asked each day, not just on this day, but each day, we are asked to come again into God's presence through Christ, our Savior. It is my hope and my prayer that this day we might ponder just who that Christ is and what impact he has on our lives. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost. Amen.